Dear Mr. and Mrs. Corbett, I wanted to send you my condolences on the death of your son, Danny. I know it's been eight months since the accident, but I'm sure it's probably still hard for you to be reminded of that day. I think about what happened a lot, as I'm sure you do too. I've been having some troubles at home and at school, and a couple people here thought it might be a, a good idea to write to you. I'm sorry this letter upsets you. That's obviously not my intention. Even though I never knew Danny, I did read the article in the town paper and was happy to learn a little bit about him. He sounds like he's a great kid. I'm sure you miss him a lot, as you said in the article. I especially like the part where Mr. Corbett talked about Danny's robots, because when I was his age, I was a big fan of robots too. In fact, I still am, in some ways. Aha. Uh -huh. I've enclosed a short story that's going to be printed in my high school lit magazine. I don't know if you like science fiction or not, but I've enclosed it anyway. I was hoping to dedicate the story to Danny's memory. There aren't any robots in this one, but I think it'd be the kind of story you'd like if you were my age. Would it bother you if I dedicated the story? If so, please let me know. The printer deadline for the magazine is March 31st. If you tell me before then, I can have to get off. I know this probably doesn't make things any better, but I wanted you to know how terrible I feel about Danny. I know that no matter how hard this has been on me, I can never understand the depth of your loss. My mom has only told me that about a hundred times. Ha uh ha. -huh. I, of course, wanted to say how sorry I am that things happened the way they did and how I wish I had driven down a different block that day. I'm sure you do too. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. If you wanted to let me know about the dedication, you can uh, email me at the address above. If I don't hear anything from you, I'll assume it's okay. Sincerely, Jason Willett. Uh, P.S. Would it be possible to meet you in person at some point?
It's the only copy, Becca. Well, it did on purpose. Are you sure? What does that mean? You think I recorded over Danny's tape on purpose? I don't know. Why would I? I, I should have taken that out. Why would I deliberately record over it? I, I don't know. Why? I, I don't know! You, you took the paintings off the fridge. Danny's paintings. To save them, I put them in plastic. And shut them in a box. For safekeeping. Okay. You think I threw the paintings out? No, I, I know you didn't. And that, that tape, I, I know you wanted the tape, of course. Obviously it wasn't on purpose, but... What? Maybe... Maybe subconsciously. Subconsciously? Is that what they're telling you at group, how I'm doing things subconsciously? You're trying to get rid of him. I'm sorry, but that's how it feels to me sometimes. Every day, it's something else. It's, it's like you're trying to get rid of any evidence he was ever here. I didn't know that tape was in there. I'm not talking about the tape, not just the and tape. The paintings are downstairs in a box. You can look at them whenever The you clothes. Huh? His shoes. You didn't need all that. Why would I keep You're wanting house? to sell the house? You already talked about this. Taz. Sending Taz to your mother's. There's a lot going on, Howie. We couldn't deal with the dog. Yeah, I was fine with the dog. I was the one walking him. Well, he got on your foot. Yeah, and he was a reminder. Yes, he was a reminder. So what? I wanted one less reminder around here. That is perfectly normal. And since you never wanted the dog to begin with. God's sake. Stop. Well, if I hadn't bought the dog. Well, if I hadn't run inside to get the phone, or if I had latched the gate. I left the gate unlatched. Well, I didn't check it. No. I'm not playing this game again. It's no one's fault. Not even the dogs. I know that. Dogs chase squirrels. Boys chase dogs. Are you telling me or yourself? He loved that dog. Of course he did. And you got rid of it. Right. Look, I got rid of the tape. I get it. It's not just the tape. I'm not talking about the tape, Becca. It's, it's Taz and, and the paintings and the clothes. And it's everything. You have to stop erasing him. You have to stop it. You have to stop. No matter how many things I get to charity, or how many art projects I box up, do you really think I don't see him every second of every day? I'm okay. I'm trying to make things a little easier on myself by hiding some of the photos and giving clothes away, but it does not mean that I'm trying to erase him. The tape was an accident. Believe me, I will beat myself up about it forever, I'm sure. Like everything else I could prevent it and didn't. That's not what I want, Becca. That's not what I'm talking about. No? Because it feels like it. It feels like I don't feel bad enough for you, that I'm not mourning enough for your taste. Come on. Or I'm mourning in the right way. Well, let me tell you, Howie, I am mourning just as much as you are. And my grief is just as real and awful as yours. I know that. You are not in a better place than I am. You're just in a different place. And that sucks because we can't be there for each other right now, but that's just the way that it is. This stuff is all we have left. That's all I'm saying. But every bit of it you'll get rid of. I understand that. You don't want to let go of it. I understand how. Do you? Do you? This isn't... Something has to change here. Because I can't do this. Like this. It's too hard. And I want that dog back. Your mother's making him fat. I want the dog back. Why don't we just wait? I don't want to! How much more do we have to lose? I miss the dog. I'm sorry. But I miss him. I want him back. <laughs>